Motorstorm Apocalypse, one of the most ambitious Motorstorms yet. But even with all the over-the-top destruction and terrain manipulation, there seems to be something missing. Something that made Motorstorm unique. Turn it off now. Say that again. Let me get your good side. Oh, you're toast. In a shocking turn of events, Motorstorm Apocalypse does have a story. Three of them, if you're being generous. The stories follow the same set of events, but from each of the main characters' perspective. You start off as Mash, the rookie, trying to make it big in the Motorstorm world. Tyler, the professional know-it-all racer. And Big Dog, the veteran racer that's there to be the father figure all those crazy racers desperately need. The story is told to you through edgy 2D animated cutscenes. They aren't anything amazing and kind of remind me of the make your own cartoon games back in the early 90s. If you do end up hating them, they are skippable, thank goodness. You know how I feel about stories and racing games. Please, for the love of God, just let me race. Apocalypse is in the title for a reason, because the world is really going to hell. You're now racing through an urban landscape called the city, which resembles a town somewhere along the west coast. Your introduction starts by dropping you off by a Higgins boat where you are shown a few of the new changes to the gameplay. Most notable is that you are now able to cool down your engines as long as you let off the gas during a jump. The fact that the side batch is now a lot more useful in both knocking back other racers and dodging obstacles. You'll be using that side batch a lot as the terrain rips apart and buildings crumble around you. Seriously though, the destruction in the environments is amazing and pulled off so well in the race that it's only slightly annoying when it gets you killed. This added feature alone is a major reason to play this Motorstorm over the rest. All your favorite vehicles are still here, and with typical Motorstorm fashion there's more to choose from. We now have supercars, superbikes, hot hatches, muscle cars, and choppers. When you do jump into your first race you'll notice the handling for the vehicles feels a little bit off. It feels a little floaty or less grippy. I'm not sure how to explain it, but it takes some time getting used to when swapping from Motorstorm Monument Valley or Pacific Rift. By the time you finish your first few races, you'll get used to it. Besides the strange handling, I really noticed myself not using the handbrake button for drifting, which is a huge shift from the first two Motorstorms. At some point during a turn, your car will begin to drift on its own, and I find it better just to let it happen. I'd press the handbrake button and it'll just throw off the whole drift. Even with these changes, it doesn't take away the feeling that this is a Motorstorm game. While you're racing, you'll notice two different factions fighting over the Rebel. One being Dusklight, who is a military for hire trying to restore order from the chaos, and the crazies who throw bombs and take pot shots at your vehicle, which makes it a little bit more difficult for people that like to hover around the max overheating area. When you do explode, you can create a much larger explosion to take out a vehicle or two around you. The biggest change, and the one that really makes it feel like something is missing, is the fact there really isn't much difference in what vehicle you pick, and how you stick to your area of the track. Monument Valley and Pacific Rift really force you to learn the best routes for each vehicle type. I just found myself taking the same path with the minor change when needed, no matter what vehicle I picked, which is a shame because that's the feature that really differentiated Motorstorm for the other racers. There were now collectible cards hidden throughout the track. It's best to collect them after working your way through the game's storyline, as trying to grab all of them during a race and pulling out a win is rather difficult. It's mostly just something to extend game time and make trophy collectors work a little bit more. I felt disinterested in the cards after a few races and began to ignore them. Apocalypse is far easier than any other Motorstorm before it, even on the veterans level. There are times that the AI seems to slow down even to let you pass them. Which is a huge change from the everyone wants to crush your face, good luck getting first towards the end of the game, why am I still playing this, I'm so mad right now. They mostly come at you from the sides now and try to boost bash you. During my playthroughs, I didn't remember the AI getting in front of me and brake checking, which I thought was the most infuriating of the tactics the AI used in the older games. It still can be rough to get first, but you're almost guaranteed to pass the event if you do halfway decent. Recreation is back with some more customization. You are able to select between normal tracks or ones with active hazards. You can set how many racers you want to go against and their difficulty. Playing through the storyline lets you unlock hardcore races and special events. Definitely try those if you are seeking a much more challenging motor storm. And finally, this is the area where you can customize your vehicle. A 
Apocalypse does a 180 with the music from past Motorstorms. Gone is the hardcore rock and techno. It's been replaced with a more cinematic classical techno or rock mix. And when I say cinematic, I mean it. The soundtrack was made by Ian Honeyman and Klaus Battelt, both of which have extensive work in the film industry. Those songs were then remixed by some techno DJs. Love it or hate it, the music does fit well with the game. But just like the past Motorstorms, I found myself skipping most of the songs and listening to the same few for my racing pleasure. You can, of course, listen to your own soundtrack, so I won't blame you if you download all the other soundtracks from later Motorstorms and put those on loop. The graphics for Motorstorm Apocalypse aren't bad by any means, but it does feel like a step backwards compared to Pacific Rift and Monument Valley. When I first played the game when it launched, I blamed the fact that they added 3D to the game. At the time, I thought it was a lame feature and was quite upset that they reduced the graphics for it. I don't know how much truth it holds as I'm not a programmer, but now that I've been able to test out the 3D, I'm glad it was added in, but ultimately seeing as 3D is dead, better graphics would have been the way to go. What makes up for the reduction in graphics is the fact there's so much destruction. Watching the environment crumble around you at a steady frame rate in 3D is quite amazing. Amazing. The vehicles look good but seem a bit more cartoony. Maybe it's the color palettes or the reduced detail. The destruction of the vehicles isn't as cool as the other Motorstorms as well. In the older Motorstorms, when you wrecked, pieces flew everywhere, even to the point where you'd get massive frame rate drops. When you do wreck an apocalypse, I don't see many pieces flying off your car, which is kind of a letdown. But when your car blows up, it goes out in a flaming ball of glory. Overall, the game does look great. It's a shame it had to take a step backwards in the graphics, but for a racing game like this, keeping steady frames is far more important than hitting graphical realism. I feel this game was cursed from the beginning. The game launched around a time a terrible earthquake hit Japan, leading to the game's permanent cancellation in that territory, along with a limited release around the world in general due to that incident. The Motostorm fan wiki page states it only sold around 200,000 copies, which is a shame and sadly started Evolution Studios on the path to closure, with the final nail being the rocky launch of Drive Club, which had a poor player reception overall. Graphically, the game looked damn good. If you've played other Motostorms and haven't given Apocalypse a shot, I think you'll get enough enjoyment out of the game to make it worth the cheap purchase. I feel that Motors from Apocalypse is definitely worth a playthrough. Alright everyone, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to see more content like this. I hope you find the games you're looking for. Stay safe, stay retro. Have a good one. Later. Oh,